the Dodgers tried all season long and they couldn't shake these Atlanta Braves. The Pirates are trying to do the same this evening. Who is going to play Saturday night in Minnesota? Welcome to The Architect, where we look back at great moments, great games, and great series in Braves history through the lenses of those who built those teams. Hi, I'm Jim Powell. Our special guest for the five episodes in this series, Hall of Famer John Sherholtz, as we look back at the National League Championship Series victories in the 1990s. And John, thank you so much once again for lending your time and expertise and memories and strategies with us. Well, it's my joy and pleasure to be here to talk about these wonderful times during the Atlanta Braves run through pennant after pennant after pennant, and uh, glad to be here with you. Now, we're gonna look at the 92 National League Championship Series where Sid slid, and we're gonna look at 95 where the table was set to go to the World Series and win it all. We're also gonna look at 96, another great National League Championship Series, and the 1999 National League Championship Series. But we're gonna start with a very, very special year, and that's 1991. When I think about throughout Braves history, I've read it all, I grew up a Braves fan, and I knew all about the, the Boston Braves and the Milwaukee Braves, and then of course, the Atlanta Braves. Of all those seasons, of all those World Series championships, of all the successes in the franchise, I don't think there's ever been a year quite like 1991. Would you agree? Oh, I definitely agree. Uh, coming to this organization late in 1990 from 23 years in Kansas City, uh, I knew what I was looking forward to doing with the Atlanta Braves organization and joining people like Bobby Cox and Paul Snyder and those fellows who had done a remarkable job. But to do what we did, to accomplish what we did as quickly as we did, to go from having lost three years in a row, the three previous years, uh, and, and not have drawn a million fans the, the last prior year, to do what we did in 91 and to re-energize the Atlanta community and the baseball fans at all levels and all ages. Uh, it was delightful for me to see the Braves caps come out, the Braves t-shirts come out, when we started playing good baseball, and of course when we got to the end and got into the playoffs, that was really, really, it, it reinvigorated the baseball community in Atlanta. A remarkable finish to the National League West title. When, during the 1991 season, did it dawn on you that this team actually could pull off something that year from worst to first? Well, as you know, we, uh, we signed quite a few free agents during the offseason in 1990, and we did that because we knew we had good young pitching that was in the pipeline, the job that Bobby Cox as general manager had done and Paul Snyder, again, using Paul's name, and the scouts all over the place. They had the pipeline filled with quality young guys, but we knew that the defense needed to be really, really strengthened and fixed. And we did that, we concentrated on that. We signed Terry Pendleton as a third baseman. We signed Rafael Belliard as a shortstop. We signed Sid Bream as a first baseman. We signed Mike Heath as a catcher. Uh, that one didn't work out quite as well as I'd hoped it would. And then late in spring training, I made a deal for Otis Nixon with the Montreal Expos with whom we trained in West Palm Beach and put Otis in center field and it really solidified the team. You listed a lot of key veterans that you added and that definitely, obviously it made a huge difference but you still had a ton of young players, inexperienced players, players who had never won on that 1991 Braves team. How does a team that has never won anything, could barely get out of last place, suddenly have a winning mentality? My conversations when I accepted the job with the Braves were with a lot of people, Stan Kasten, of course, the president of the club, Terry McGurk, but principally Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox, who I had admired from across the field and across the executive tables at winter meetings and all of that, and Bobby and I talked about what, what my plan was and what he thought we should do, and we blended that together. And so having that input from that, that great baseball mind of his, uh, we knew we were on the right track. And we believed that we were doing the right thing together, and we did it, and we, we put a solid club together and got ourselves in the playoffs at the end of the year. Could you believe this? The Braves were going into postseason play against the National League East champion Pittsburgh Pirates. The miracle had happened. What did you think of the matchup with the Pirates? Well, Pirates were tough. The Pirates had a very strong organization. Their major league team had proven that they were capable of going far into the postseason, as they had, had shown. And then we had a matchup that we had to be ready for. In the opening game, John Smoltz comes out there and, uh, I mean, he, he had some great games. Doug Drabeck had put the Pirates out in front as you go through the series leading up to the game seven. 
Pirates take the opener 5-1. to one. Pirates had home field advantage. Drabeck was awesome. He beat Glavin that day. Game two, Steve Avery. And this is a recurring theme in 1991. Steve Avery beats the Pirates in Pittsburgh one to nothing. That's one thing about road baseball, home baseball. Pitching can defeat all of that. Well, momentum for a, a team in baseball who's in a little bit of a slump is the next, the next day's pitcher. And Steve Avery for us a couple of times was the next day's pitcher and he really stood up and got the job done and put us back in a positive groove and, and helped us win series after series. Well, you're looking for a split in Pittsburgh on the road and, and you got one, then you go home and the Braves pummel Pittsburgh in game three. Everything's looking great. Smoltz throws a great game. Alejandro Pena gets the save in that one. Game four, the Pirates in 10 innings able to outlast the Braves by a final of three to two. So the Pirates kind of stole one in Atlanta and then they came back in game five and Zane Smith threw a great game and he beats the Braves one to nothing, beating Glavin. And the Pirates now lead the series three games to two with two games to play and you're, you're up against it. What were you thinking uh, as you got on that plane to go back to Pittsburgh? Well, we didn't think we were up against it because we had really, really high confidence in ourselves. Our players did, our manager did, our coaches, the people who saw our, our young players come matriculate through the major leagues and, and grow into major league caliber players throughout the season. We felt good. Uh, and again, we had the pitching we felt that would match up with anybody we played. And it, it so happened that it turned out to be that way. And Steve Avery did it again. Steve Avery did it again. Uh, another one nothing victory for the Braves right. to even things up. Tell us about the form that Avery had at that point in his career. I mean, obviously he was completely dominant in this National League Championship Series. That's the word. He was dominant in that series. He had a, he was a young guy, big, strong body guy, great arm, and his composure and, and his competitive spirit, quiet, but yet a competitive spirited guy, he went out there and just dominated a very, very good baseball team uh, twice. And then you've got John Smoltz going in, in the finale against John Smiley, a rematch that had gone the Braves way the first uh, go round. You were pretty confident going into game seven? With Smoltz on the mound? Absolutely. I mean, this guy is a, a great athlete, as we know, and uh, a real competitor and with great stuff. And I wouldn't want to be sitting in that other dugout when John Smoltz is taking the mound to, in a game that had to be won. The toughest pitcher this year gets right-handed batters in the major leagues. Bouchelle is out on strikes. Strike three to Jay Bell. And a strike out for Smoltz, and he is rapidly becoming a big story in this playoff. Well, you broke the Pirates' hearts, and you did so with guys like rookie Brian Hunter. He had some big knocks in this series. Ron Gant was running wild on the base pads. You had some players that came up big for you. Well, they're, they're homegrown players, and, and that's the key to sustaining success over long periods of time which we eventually demonstrated we were going to do starting in 91 and, and, and winning division championships all the way through 19, uh, 2014. But those young players that were drafted and signed and developed by the Braves became major league caliber players and championship caliber players before our own eyes and the eyes of our fans. All four is way wide. And Lonnie Smith draws a walk. Pendleton, the runner at first, there he goes, and a fly ball into left field at the track, and it's going to be caught by Bonds. A run scores, the throw into second, one nothing Atlanta. Two out. Into the corner, and is it going to stay fair? It is a home run, and it's three to nothing. Gant is going. The buyers throw. So the umpire said he missed it. That ball is fair. More runs for Atlanta. And an RBI double for Hunter who's driven in three runs. Two walks and a two-out double. And that's strike two, and now victory is one strike away for Bobby Cox and his Atlanta team. And to the first baseman, Hunter. And that's it for Atlanta. They won last night. They won this evening. And John Smoltz has pitched Atlanta into the World Series. So the Braves win it 4 0, win the series four games to three. It's a classic series, and now you're off to the World Series for maybe the classic 
seven game series of all time. Um, incredible World Series, but before you knew how classic that series was going to be, what was the, was it jubilation that, that you had beaten the Pittsburgh Pirates? I know everybody's happy, but um, what were the thoughts as you, now you got to turn around and you got to go play in the World Series? I'd be dishonest if I didn't say there was some jubilation. There was, because again, we had a bunch of young guys excited about getting a chance to play in the playoffs and to win a series as big as that was, and we had veterans who had the composure and, and, and solidified the leadership in the clubhouse. So it was a wonderful mix. We had Bobby Cox at the helm and his coaching staff that did a remarkable job and, and how honored I have been to work with him for those 17 years in that partnership, general manager and manager, and it worked for us. And we were jubilant, but we knew we had our work to cut to, to get done before we decided to celebrate whenever that time came. So the Braves won their first National League pennant of the 90s, but certainly not the last. Next up will be in our series will be the 1992 National League Championship Series. It will be a rematch, and it will be a classic game in Braves history. Thank you very much, John, for your time, and thank you for watching The Architect.